little jumpy right now. Uh, my entire bag of gummy bears while we were doing this. Um, but I'm very excited for track three because I'm in track three. Um, but we have some really cool people in track three. First, we're gonna have Dan Fellers from OpenSide. He is the founder. He's gonna be talking about on to air. I'm super totally excited about that. And then Mike San Marzano, and I probably butchered your name, um, is gonna be talking about Air Connects, which I want to find out about. And then I'm gonna be talking about cross -plat platform automation, which is what I do. And then we have Cherry Yang, who is the founder and CEO of AirOps Consulting, and she is going to be doing sales for the new age. So as I hope everyone's still excited. If we need to get up and do a dance break for a second, we can. Anyone do dance? <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and give it to Dan. And um, I'm really excited to hear what he has to say. All right, thank you, Jen. And just want to say thanks to Chris and everybody that's put this on. It's been amazing. I think one of the biggest things that drove me into Airtable was the community. I saw something very unique about the Airtable community very early on. I've been part of it for uh, over two years now. And um, there's something unique about this community that you don't find with other products. And so that's been a big draw for me. So I'm gonna go through, there's three pillars of what we do at OpenSide. OpenSide is the name of the, the parent company that, that I run. And um, there's three things that we do. We, we do a lot of um, customer services. So we do a lot of implementation work. And we also work with um, other contractors as well. So if you're a contractor, I've already spoken to many of you, I believe. But if you're interested in learning more about um, how to work with us on the, on the consulting side, feel free to reach out. The other thing we do is we run um, Built on Air. So Camille already talked a little bit about Built on Air. I'm going to go a little bit deeper real quick on what you can find on Built on Air. It was really uh, an initiative to just give back to the community and just cover everything that's going on in the um, Airtable universe. And so we do a lot of things. Every week we'll do a roundup of what people are talking about in the different Airtable communities, the, the main one from Airtable, anything going on on YouTube channels, uh, Facebook groups, Reddit and our own community. We run a Slack community. So when you join, if you go to Built on Air, sign up for our newsletter, you can, there's an option to join our Slack and there's a lot of discussion going on there. Um, Camille already talked about our podcast. So every week we talk to a new person. The cool thing about it is after we kind of get to know that person, um, we then do a show and tell. And so you'll find people sharing their real life Airtable environments and you see a lot of uh, cool stuff. You'll probably see something from your industry as well. And um, so you can check that all out. And I think we, we just released with this week our 75th episode. So that's pretty cool. So we'll continue to, to keep growing that as well. So we've spoken to a lot of you and we need, we always need more guests. So like Camille said, if you're interested in showing um, what you've built, feel free to reach out. The other thing we do is if, if you've been to Airtable's universe, you've seen all the cool stuff. What I realized early on is I don't really know what's going on, like what's new, what I looked at. And so I wanted to, at the end of every month, um, aggregate what was new on the Airtable universe. So we, every month we'll, we'll list out all of the people. Looks like Chris has four new followers this last month. So that's pretty cool. Um, this seaside allotment food has, is always at the top. That one seems to um, get a lot of followers. So we do Rigged, that. rigged. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but. <clears throat> rigged. So we gotta get Chris up there. So hopefully next month, Chris will be number one. I didn't know I wasn't even on here. So it's kind of <laughs> We track, and then we also track um, all the new bases. So instead of like, so you can see every month what was added to the Airtable universe and then all the new creators that join the community. So it's pretty cool. Every month you'll, you'll get that report. Then we also track when people share their scripts. So if, if you're interested in learning more about um, what scripts are out there, whenever somebody posts it either on the internet or on the Airtable community, we try to aggregate all of those and you can search through them and find examples of of scripts that people are writing that it might be useful for you. We also try to track all of the communities, products, and service providers related to um, Airtable. 
so you can come and find all the different. Um, no, it's like an app store for, for Airtable. What's that? It's like an app store, like directory. Yeah. So it's like cool. a directory. Yeah. So we, um, so we do that I see some familiar faces and the people on right now that, that are in there. So that's kind of uh, built on air. There's other things on there, but I highly recommend everybody. It's a, it's a free resource. It's really community driven. Um, and it's, it's been cool to be a part of and thank you to all those that, um, help do that. Camille and Ali are the two podcast hosts. So shout out to them. Uh, love listening to their podcasts every week. So the, the final thing that I'll touch on is onto air. So onto air is a software product that we built really out of just trying to solve our own issues and doing consulting work with Airtable and doing implementation. It's now we about a month, maybe a month and a half ago, we released our new platform which is built from the ground up to really be a full suite of applications um, that will help you. If you're really using Airtable in your business, our kind of core customers are, are you know, maybe midsize. We do have a lot of small customers as well. Um, probably it's a little bit pricey for kind of do it yourself or hobbyists. Um, but we do have some, some, some lower priced um, tiers as well that, that work. Uh, for any budget. So we got a handful of customers as well. Um, some, some pretty big ones, big and small. So um, a lot of people are using us. I'm going to give a quick demo of some of the, the functionality that you can find in onto air. So right now we have six apps. We have a seventh that is uh, coming in the next month or so. But our core two that, that we started with was actions and forms. What Actions was, was before uh, Airtable released their automation, the only way to automate stuff was inside of Zapier or Integromat. And so, but there was limitations to um, the Airtable solutions. So we built a better connector for Zapier um, that does things like bulk support. So you can do multiple records at the same time. You can do updates based off of a change of a field or the last modified date or when a date triggers, when, it, when it's now a certain time on a date field, you can trigger that or a custom formula. Now that um, Airtable has automations, we'll be releasing in the next two weeks, our support for where you can still use actions in addition to um, the automation. So you can automate it from Airtable, but then push it through us to do more advanced stuff than what you can do um, with, with Airtable's automations or link it into Zapier <clears throat> to um, directly push your data off of an automation or a script directly into Zapier, which you can then use throughout um, Zapier's environment. Um, or if you're a developer to be able to use the actions, which are kind of pre-configured searches or updates or, or creations you can use those uh, via web hooks. So you can use them inside of your scripts as well. So that'll be coming out. That's, that'll be part of our next release in a couple of weeks. Um, forms is another one where if, if you need anything advanced as far as a form goes, you know that Airtable forms are pretty limited. So we um, built an integration into JotForm, which is another third party uh, form builder that you can do some pretty advanced um, forms using JotForm. What we did is we built integrations where you can pull your data directly from Airtable into your form. So this right here is coming from an Airtable list. It's a live feed. So if you add anything to your Airtable and then refresh this page, it would show up here. And then we also have the ability to, um, to have a, a sub field. So this is driven based off of what you select here. So this is a list of all cities in Colorado. If I switch it to California, then that list switches to um, California cities, which I just had two in my database. And it has support for multiple selection um, or single selection like this. And then you can also pull data and render it either using Markdown or HTML. And so you can actually, so for this, if you had city um, pictures or whatnot, you can, um, you can configure it in a formula field in your Airtable and then display it 
um, here, it'll get rendered as HTML. And so you can build some pretty advanced forms, uh, job form, you can support all of theirs. And then we also have the ability that when you submit a form, we make it easy to push back into Airtable and it'll do an update or a create. So that's one big difference is you can actually update existing records back into, into Airtable. So that is forms. Backups is you can set up um, scheduled backups that will take all of your data. You can configure it down to, um, you could specify um, multiple bases or even within a base, you can say, I only want to back up this table and it'll back up your data and your attachments, um, which is all configurable. And it'll push it into either Google Drive, Box or Dropbox right now. And so you can set it up to every day or even every hour on our higher tier plans to constantly be backing up your data to an external um, source. So that's good for kind of an insurance policy. That's our backups um, schemas I'm going to come back to. I'll dig deeper into um, scripts and storage. These are, these are probably a little bit more technical. These are more for developers. If you're, if you're writing any scripts, you'll quickly learn that it's tough to manage multiple scripts in any kind of environment. So what scripts is, is a way to, um, is, is kind of a developer environment where you can break out your scripts and have kind of a global place where you can reference them from multiple blocks um, or multiple bases and have just one source of truth for your code and also be able to create a menu inside of a script block that can allow you to run multiple scripts and it's all managed within one environment. So it's kind of for, for script developers, a way to manage their script environments as well as to pull in commonly used snippets <clears throat> or even third party libraries you can use inside of, our, inside of our snippets that you can then reference from your other scripts. Um, storage is a way to, it's, it's also developer specific. It's a way to, um, if you want to keep your, your API keys, um, you can't, it, you don't want to keep them in your script for sensitivity reasons. You can store them in our database. It's kind of a key value store. We also have a proxy where if you run into cores, um, or you want to set up, um, connections to third-party APIs, you can actually set up proxies here. So that's coming in handy with our, with our scripting environment. Uh, so lastly, I'm going to go into schemas. So schemas is kind of, uh, if you've used the, the free schema block that comes with um, Airtable, let me see it. This one, you, you might have used this, it kind of shows you. We it's kind of took that and put it on steroids. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to keep a, a history of all the changes that, that I'm making to my schema database. And so how that works is once you set up a, a schema, um, you take snapshots of your schema once, you're, once you've made changes and you've, and you've added things. Um, so if I were to add like a new table and um, Let's just add a reference so it shows up back to our post table. And so now when I add this, um, I can generate a new snapshot via some script code that it actually will generate. It'll give you code that you put inside of a script block. You don't have to do any changes to the script. You just paste it in and then you can run a new, a new snapshot and you can rename it. and then run it and it'll push it to the server. And then you can see here, if you refresh, you'll see the new snapshot that just got created that will have, um, that doesn't have our new table. Something broke. The demo gods got me. Anyway, so it'll show your, your history. And so then you can see um, a snapshot and you can see all the changes that were made. Let me go to a better one. And you can see all the fields that were modified. It'll show you the before and after. So if you renamed a field or named the, the type of the field, or if you deleted the field, 
it keeps a, a history of all the changes that you make to your schema and um, at, at every level. So you can see your base and any changes you make at the base level. Uh, at the table level, it'll show you all the changes and views and fields and whatnot. You can also share these so you it can generate a link that you could then um, embed or um, or uh, give to somebody as a, as a share link. And you can also print this out as an image that allows you to um, uh, copy it into presentations or whatnot that you're working with your with your base. So that is schema um, and that's kind of all of our all of our functionality so it's where our goal is to be a complete suite of tools that any business that's serious about using Airtable um, will likely need to to run Airtable inside their business um, so lastly is one of the is one of the giveaways for the conference um, and we'll email this out I'm sure Chris will but We'll give 10% um, off to anybody that, that's looking to sign up. And I think there'll also be raffles for, for more donations as well. So, yeah, I think you guys gave away a big ticket item too. Uh, it was a, let me get down here. I think we'll give three, away $300 vouchers, three right. of them. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Cool. Thank you so much, Dan. No problem. Jen, Dan, if you want to stop your share, we'll send this back to Jen. Jen, are you ready to be in the spotlight? I think it's Mike's turn. Right. Mike. Oh, you're going to introduce Mike? Mike? Yes. Mike, are you here? Mike from AirConnects, right? Yes. Yeah. Did you make him a host? He should be now. Mike from okay. AirConnects, caller, are you online? Caller. I'm on the line. Can you hear me? You are online. You are live. Okay. Mike, you're from Air Connects. Yes, Air Connects. Um, let me share my screen. The whole screen, hopefully. <clears throat> Can everyone see that okay, or it's a bit too low res? Good. Okay. Um, so Air Connects uh, is is a tool for building websites using Airtable as the database. Um, I am going to try and jump in the deep end here and do like a live build, uh, like a speed run of building a project rather than just showing what's already been built. Um, but just to give you an idea of the results, this, like our homepage is built using the system. So it's a system built using its own system. It's a bit of an inception thing there, but um, Moving on, because we have very little time and I don't think I'll get through all of this, but so I've got here like a diagram of like an idea, you know, a, a classic uh, harebrained idea for building like a web platform that could become a business, kind of a software as a service thing. Uh, and the idea is that, um, you know, it would be like you build a, a blogging system um, that we would build out the, the blog itself and then also manage the writing and the editing and the publishing and kind of, uh, the reason that this suits Airtable really well is because, um, number one, it would require like a custom database structure. You would have two different user types and a few different tables. Um, and the other one is that we can have a central data source and then, um, and then any number of client uh, websites from that. So the management is all done through one website and then you have to, Hi. yes. Can you do me a favor and make your screen just a little bit bigger or just spotlight one of the screens? Okay, I'm gonna try and do that. Just so we can see all this amazingness in one page. Yeah, I also noticed that, uh, and I think he's a wide screen, I do too. If there's a, button on zoom in the upper right hand corner this little square if you make it full screen it means you can't multitask uh it's it's really low it's really legible and then mike if you just share just a window and not the whole screen it might be easier okay um so new share and i will try to just do the chrome window here you got it that better Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Don't, forget, don't forget, folks, you can also blow it up full screen and it's super big when you do that. 
Okay. Just a question though, if I bring the air table on top of that, you can see that overlay? No, you'll have no, to. No, because you're only focused on one window. Sorry again. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to have to go to the Airtable website then. I use the, um, the desktop app most of the time. Okay, so this would be um, the database structure that we're working with. And I'm going to try to build this out. Okay, so this is the plan. Uh, it's been laid out. As everyone agrees, making a plan is super important. The plan looks complicated because it's a complicated project. Um, what AirConnect tries to do is make the building process more simple, but we don't want to reduce the complexity of your plan. So you build what you want to build, and we try to make the tools that you can do it uh, without too many headaches. So I've skipped the whole like setting up the website and connecting Airtable because those are just kind of step-by-step -step processes. And we're gonna jump in straight to like the page building experience. So if I go into the page editor, the first page that I wanna build is just the home page. So like usual, I'm gonna have like a big hero image on the front and we're gonna have some text here. We build your blog. Uh, for the background, I'm just going to go to the Unsplash integration here. Going to search for an image related to blogging, and I'll just choose the first one there. And then I'm going to just bring that text to the middle. Okay, so uh, that's the kind of header done. Now we're going to add something about our services. So to do this, I'm going to use some of the um, content that I've got in Airtable here. So for the homepage, usually I, I have one table with a bit of content. Um, and then I just loop that in. So going back to the editor there, I'm going to connect to one of those tables and it's going to be the homepage one. And I don't want all of the content there. I just want a specific uh, subset. So I want the, the section called services. So I'm going to add a filter and I'm gonna say section contains serve, should be fine. Uh, and now I just map the content fields that I want. Um, so I'm gonna have the heading and then the image, which is like an icon. And you can mix the variables from Airtable with static values. So if I add text, it's going to add text to the end of all of those. Um, going on to the layout. So I can change the appearance of each of these sort of card things. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly try and do that. Make it look a little bit nice. Mm -hmm. text a bit smaller, align center, and I'll put a border on the images. Okay, so those are the kind of individual item styling. And now I can apply some styling to the whole section. Um, actually, I won't do it on this section. I'm gonna add another one and just show you a few of the other ways that you can customize the content. So homepage again, and this time, I just want the section that has logos. So this is like the, uh, the typical kind of when you show all of your client logos who you're working with. And we're going to switch to W. So this is like instead of X number of columns, it's a fixed width. Um, square image, going to make the image very small. Going to increase that and we're going to shrink the logo to fit inside and I don't know why there's an LO there I was messing with the code today so 
let's pretend that's not there. Um, and just move on. So I'm going to use a fill color to make these gray. Uh, actually, I'll make them white and then I'll make the background gray. Background, oops, background, just a light gray, maybe a dark gray. Um, yeah, so that would be kind of the home page. And you can come back later and add more to that. Mm, now we're going to add a sign up form. So um, from the home page, so if I start to run over time, someone just please interrupt me because uh, this is probably too ambitious for the time that we have. But um, we got to try. Okay, so I'm just going to update that and then I'm going to view that on the front. And so we've built this kind of basic page, a uh, little bug in there, I'm not sure what that's about. And I've added a link to a sign up page. So if I click the link, then I just go to the page and again, I'm going to build, but this time we're going to use a form um, to let clients sign up for our service. And so this is going to be done. Oops, I'll just remove that. So I need the form block. And I'm going to choose the form that allows us to add a record to a table. Okay, I'm going to choose the table that I want to add a record to and that's going to be clients. And after I submit, um, after I submit, I'm just going to, I'm just going to show a message. It doesn't matter. We'll assume that the onboarding process is kind of done um, outside of this workflow. So the form builder is just similar to what you would see in, um, in Airtable. You get your fields and you can choose which ones you want to be uh, open for input. And um, we will just leave it super basic like that. And then we're gonna go and test our form. So I'm just gonna put in random, super random values here. And when we submit, we should see a new client appear there. Um, you might not have caught that because I should have switched to the Airtable browser window, but I'll try and do it again real quick. Yeah, all right. So moving on, we are going to add a page. So after the client has signed up, um, they can log in. So we're going to make a page and we're going to call it the client dashboard or client portal. And uh, we're going to put a link in the menu and one in the footer as well. When I save that, I'm going to go straight into the editor. And here we are going to build out the um, client portal. So the first thing that we want to do is just add a login, a login block. So I'm going to do that. And this is going to prevent the public from being able to see the page. It's just going to present like a login challenge before people can see what's in the, on the page. So the login is going to be for people in the clients table. And um, I just have to choose an email field here. Okay. If I update this page and then view it on the front, I should be seeing the actual login form now. So this will show um, as an admin, I can now log in as any of the users. So they would be uh, issued with an email and password or rather a password to their email and then they would use the form, but um, I can just log in as an admin kind of to emulate the user experience. And of course the page is blank because we haven't added anything else to it. So once the login is set up, I can just minimize it like that. And now I'm going to add a loop and this is going to be the first step in like, uh, 
I guess you would call it like a multi-page form or a multi multi-stage form perhaps. Um, so I want the client to choose a writer. Um, so I'm just going to pull in the writers table and I'm going to start configuring that just by mapping these values. And one of the values is a rating. So it's a numerical value. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and I can connect that up to a stars. Uh, so this is live data. It's coming in. Oh, whoops. I keep going. So it's live. It's coming in from Airtable. So what this is, is it's a rating uh, roll up. So we give each article a rating and then the average rating will be like rolled up into the writer's overall rating. And that's what is going to be showing on that page there. Um, wow. Excuse me. Uh, I mean, this is, this is pretty incredible. Yes. <laughs> you can do all this this quickly. Um, I don't know. How can people learn more about this? Um, you can go to the website and just sign up for the beta. So heaps of people have signed up and I've let barely anyone in so far because I've just been messing with it and messing with it. But um, right. it's been, it's been way too long. I need to let more people in and get more feedback. Um, so yeah, you can just sign up there and I'll start letting people in. I'm going to go crazy with it pretty soon and just throw people in and see what happens. But uh, yeah, that's, um, that's part of the build process. And what I'll do is I'll finish this process. I'll record it as a video and I will put it on YouTube or something. So you can watch more if you wanted to see the whole thing done. Gosh, thank you so much for uh, uh, doing, sharing this with us, Mike. And uh, also thank you because we ran a little over with track two. I know it's, uh, it could be a little hard. We're trying to keep people on schedule. But, uh, it's all good. <laughs> so much magic. Uh, Jen, who do you got up? Uh, Mike, if you can stop sharing. Uh, Jen, who yep. do you got up for us next? I have myself up next. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. We're going to get Jen next. Hey, okay. um, So I can talk about myself um, so I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, I have a little presentation and then I have some cool already, already completed demos so that nothing can break on me, hopefully. Um, so let's talk about cross platform automation. I hope that was the right screen. Yeah. Okay. So cross platform automation is basically architecture when you use more than one software. Um, I like to use it because most of the time you can't get what you need done in one software. And I know Airtable is trying very hard to be your all in one. Um, but until you can send Stripe invoices and contracting directly out of Airtable, I'm still holding on to my other software. Um, so first off, a little bit about me. Um, I have a, a lot of background in a lot of things because I'm a millennial. I was born in 1982, so you can do your own math on that one. Um, but I grew up in a business, a family business with mechanical engineering and steel fabrication, super sexy. Um, and then I went into accounting, wholesaling, um, construction, luxury sales, and real estate. Um, I am a certified project management professional and an accountant, which means I'm really, really organized and kind of orderly and a little neurotic. Um, I have, I'm working on my MBA currently in data analytics because I like data. And I also am in entrepreneurship and I'm at the um, UIUC, so I like Illinois. Um, I have been in business for nine years and please don't do the math on any of this. Um, making businesses run more efficiently. Um, the first foray I had into building stuff that businesses needed because they couldn't figure it out um, was creating a transaction tracking software for a real estate company. Um, if you're a real estate broker, you have to tell the IRS how much your um, agents made during the year, but you don't write any of the checks. And you have to depend on the agents telling you what they did, they did all year. So it's a complete mess. So I created a WordPress website with forms to have people put their information in, created a, a database, and filled in the information on the back end. And, okay, so then I, um, I'm always running into con to limitations in all-in-one software. Um, we talked a little bit in the chat about Dubsado, which is a great tool to get money and people to sign contracts, and that's about it. 
Um, so I have a lot of agencies and businesses um, that run into needs for software. And this is kind of why I got into this crazy, let's build some stuff um, business. Um, I like to teach people how to build their own architecture. Um, and I also do custom architecture development and it's all low code and no code. And that's because I want people to be able to manage their own businesses after my team builds stuff because I would really hate for you to have to change something like a comma or a period in an email um, and have to call a developer for that. So this is why I really like low code and no code is because once you kind of have the framework in place, you can do a lot of cool things. Um, and then I'm also building some tools that are coming soon. I'm not as far as Camille <laughs> or Gabon, um, but I am trying very hard to remember that JavaScript I learned in college um, and learning React at the same time. My daughter is learning Python alongside me. So, <laughs> and she's nine and she makes me very scared sometimes, but it's a great thing. Um, you can find me at growwithgen.com and in 2021 and become adept interfaces. Um, we are switching our branding, but right now it's still Grow with Jen. And let's see if I can get this to advance. Canva. Um, so why we use multiple platforms. And I know we talked about all the cool things that Airtable does, but there's still some limitations. Sometimes, especially when you're an online business or you have a business that has multiple clients that you're servicing, multiple ways to generate income, um, all-in-one software doesn't necessarily answer all your needs. You also want to make sure that you're using the right tools for the job. Sometimes there's cool tools that do a lot of good things really well, and they do some other stuff that's just not that good. It's kind of okay, but it's not doing what you want it to do. So you always want to have the highest and best use of um, a tool, a person, or a software. You also want to make sure that when you're trying to automate, which is a lot of why you do cross-platform software, is that you want to have precision, and sometimes software doesn't send information the right way and you can fight it to do it in a software that does and save a lot of time and energy. Um, also, because I'm a data nerd, I like to make sure that you get better metrics, better data, and also, especially in these times when everyone's running their businesses all over the country and all over the world and trying to do less, with, um, do more with less, you wanna make sure that you're using less human capital, and I think I spelled that wrong. <laughs> and I talk a mile a minute and I had a bag of gummy bears. Um, the whole concept of this is that, you know, manufacturers really work with one machine. If you've ever walked into a big factory, you see a lot of machines doing really cool things and some humans moving things from one thing to an, move, moving pieces and products from one thing to another. You don't see this big machine that you shove in some resources and out comes this beautiful product, what you would call it. You have to do all these different machines in order in a certain structure that do things a certain way. They have to be per perfectly matched machines to those needs in order to create the perfect product, the perfect outcome. And they all do it at the very highest level. So cross-platform automation is about having the right tools for the right job. Airtable is perfect for data management and triggering automation, either within Air, um, Airtable, especially with the cool things that they're doing now, and outside of Airtable. You also use interfaces. So jot form, um, the forms that Dan was talking about, if you have those ability to have that interface, you're able to organize data into your database so people can't screw it up. If you need your database to run a certain way so that a phone number is typed in a certain way in order for the text messaging platform to text out of it, if you let them just type, start typing into Airtable and you don't have your fields organized, you don't have interfaces kind of being that stop gap, for your information, it's going to start throwing everything into a, tangent, uh, a tailspin and things don't work. Um, you also might have accounting software that you use that your accountant will like you for. Um, accountants don't really like spreadsheets and things and you know box of receipts at the end of the year. So using the right automation software gets the right information into your uh, accounting software so that your accountant will leave you alone and then you can just focus on doing what you wanna do and not trying to create invoices. The other thing, cool thing about automation tools is that you can do a lot without heavy coding. I like Zapier and Integramat, but Zapier is fuller <laughs> currently. Um, but you can connect the dots between those softwares without having to code or you know, spending all this time learning how to code. You can also white label the experience. And this changed, I guess, today where you can actually send an email through automations in Airtable directly from Airtable, but as of yesterday, you couldn't. <laughs> so. Um, it's nice to be able to send an email that was automated out of Airtable. It doesn't say 
automations by Airtable all over it. It just says your email signature. So, you know, as things start to progress and, and businesses and software gets more, um, more robust, you're going to see some of these things start to collapse, but you're still going to have some of these tools that are just really good at what they do. You may not want to get rid of right away. So automation itself is about using human energy for the highest needs. You're able to clean and manage data. You're able to process information at higher volumes, get paid faster, especially if you're a business. If people have no friction to getting an invoice from you, getting paid, getting money to you, money and lending in your account, your cash flow starts to free up, your business becomes a lot more functional or just what you're doing in general. If you're trying to manage your personal life and keep track of all your, inter your interconnections and some of that stuff fills in for you and automates for you, you're spending less time on the things that don't actually add value to what you're trying to do. It's just processing that, that information, that, that data. Um, you're also able to remove bottlenecks in your organization. I'm a huge bottleneck. If I have to assign something to somebody and I don't get around to it today because time's up, I gotta go, um, nothing's gonna happen in my business until tomorrow. If I can get my software to say, okay, we have a new client, here's all the things that need to happen, here's the due date, who, here's who's responsible for what, let's get it done. I'm no longer the bottleneck in my organization. So this is why automation is so important. If you wanna automate your business or anything that you're doing, you have to have standard operating procedures. You have to have a blueprint for what you're doing. You have to be able to intricately plan out all of your flows, your clients, everything that happens, what triggers, what automations, what needs to happen. You also have to have a workflow. A workflow can be something that's those domino effects where it goes from one thing to another. And if this action in the software happens over here and people get emails and notifications, that's great. But you also need to make sure that you're workflowing that out. And then also, if you don't know how to do something manually, you can't tell a software to do it automatically. So it's very important to be able to know how to do things manually before you start trying to automate. So when you're looking at what you're going to use for your software stack, you have to think about what your volume is. You know, Onto Air is awesome you know, software and it's great for many things, but if your software budget is $5, <laughs> because you're a small, you're doing a hobby business, then it's probably not going to work for you. So you have to source these tools and start cobbling things together that fit your pocketbook. Um, if you have a lot of team members, you're going to start incurring more software costs, Airtable costs per user if you're using the automations and the apps and things like that. Um, and I will answer that email, that what you just said, Dan, David, because I just saw that. Um, and then also you have to figure out what's important for you to do manually versus automatic. Um, I work with a lot of um, human resources businesses, and sometimes you need to have things to kind of process applicants and process clients to get to that first level. But then once you get, you've done the first cut, then you're going to want to talk with people and have that permanent human connection. You may not want an automated email going out and things like that. So figure out what's important for you, what's high touch, and what really needs to be automated and what doesn't need to be automated. Um, so here's my current software, favorite software stack that's of today. <laughs> I could change tomorrow. Um, but I like Airtable for database automation, communication, and an interface. They do have some great forms, especially for an internal interface. Um, JotForm has just some really cool forms. You can do a lot of conditional formatting. You can kick people out of your form before they even finish submitting because they don't fit certain criteria. Um, and you can even automate responses to them very quickly. So it's a nice, very easy to use um, graphical um, interface. Also Zapier and Integromat really depends on your use case. If you need to bulk process a lot of information, you're probably looking at Integromat. Um, if you're looking at um, wanting to be able to manage it yourself and you're not a heavy coder, Zapier is a really cool tool. Calendly is still my favorite scheduler, sorry. <laughs> today, uh, today, um, just because it does some workflows now and they do some really cool stuff. And um, I like the internal, I like the external look of Calendly. Um, I do a lot of automation off of Calendly invitations and um, ad hoc meetings even. And then Twilio is a really cool text messaging communication platform. I am just now unlocking all the cool things that you can do in, um, in Twilio. So I like their, I like their omni channel too. I just haven't been able to use it yet. 
Um, so if you're interested in building out your own automations and building huge systems and you're not a software developer, um, I do have a boot camp which includes some zaps that are already written, some Airtable bases that are already set up for project management, and I'll show you a little bit behind the scenes of what that looks like. Um, and it also ties in one of my favorite software, which is Asana, because I have a team. Um, and I like to assign out information. I hate email. Email's the death of me. <laughs> so anything I can do to communicate with my team without having to look at my inbox is incredible. So um, Asana is included in that stack. So, but this allows you to not just do the automation and the tools and making all the software talk to one another, but actually going in and doing all that mapping out the workflows, drawing the pictures, brainstorming, figuring out what your systems are in your business, as opposed to just, I wanna build some stuff, let's do it. Um, so this is what Systems Bootcamp looks like. And then let me show you, everything's in my full screen. Um, So here is some of the apps that I have set up. Um, I have a demo account for nanny agencies, replacement agencies. Um, and so you can use some of the charts and things like that. Um, Edmund was talk asking about the page designer. This is what the page designer can look like. I used to be blonde <laughs> until about two months ago. Um, here's the Twilio block and then here's the Google Maps block. So this is just some cool stuff that you can do on a CRM that has two different um, Two different clients. Um, so what I use internally is for a certain number of a certain type of service that I offer, which is creating um, human resources management, um, Airtable ecosystems, is I have what's called systems for agencies and I have everything. I have all the SOPs. I have the workflow planned out. I have everything. So when somebody comes in and they've booked with my agency, then they come and pick their project start date. And then once their start date comes through, the Zap says, okay, great. We have a new record in Airtable, which is a new client. They have a start date. So let's go ahead and let's create a new set of a new portal basically in Airtable for them. So it has all the start dates and times based on their start date. Um, I create all these Airtable um, tasks, records, if you will. All 22 of them. <laughs> I then create a project in Asana and then I use Streak to do use my communication because I still like to make sure people are checking their emails and so forth. Um, so I create a box in Streak so that I can check in my Gmail if someone's um, responded to an email. And so then what happens is is that this is generated by creating a view in Airtable. It's a Kanban view of just this client and their standard operating procedures, their workflow. I create a um, view for this space, which looks like this, password protected. And then I go in and I create, just because Calendly doesn't let me pick out certain days ahead of time, um, I can just go ahead and use ad hoc in Calendly to give them four dates on the week of their start date. And then I go in, ooh, I <laughs> great. And I put in their portal link here, their portal password, and a link to that Calendly appointment um, times. And through the power of streak and templates. Okay, the only thing that's live. Every everybody send good energy. Everybody send good energy. Okay, okay. It works. Um, so see all the variables here are picked up in that canned email that I already wrote, all with the links, including my um, affiliate links, um, to all the platforms that they need to set up for before we get started. And then you can see the portal links and the password and everything's all set up for them. And then once they schedule that first date, a bunch of other zaps happen, like um, updating Airtable. And then the other piece is that once those tasks start um, populating in Airtable, they also populate in Asana and get assigned out by my team members. <laughs> that is epic. Just to let you know, Jen, that is as, long, as soon as they pick their start date, and sometimes they don't pick their start date. Um, once they pick their start date, my project management tool, all I have to do is go in there, pick up their new portal link, and their um, and their link to my Calendly for that week that they're starting. Send that email, and then it all automates again. 
That's so that's the kind of stuff that I like doing. So um, I had a client over a year ago was like, okay, if when somebody books a coaching call with me, I want my sauna to fill in. Like we're going to make it happen. Yep. And that's so, what I think. And that's really the power of what we're doing with air tables. You need something, just make it happen. Like, exactly. You know? Like, tell me what you want and we'll figure it out. And that's what you have to do is like, you have to draw it out. Like I use draw, I, I use diagrams.net. It used to be draw.io. Draw it out, write on a piece of paper, do what you got to do. And you're going to, like, this takes a long time. So even if you're a consultant or you're not a consultant, it's going to take time. But that's why it's important to really figure out what your workflow is. Because once you have your standard operating procedures and your workflow, all of this is possible. But if you're like, I want to run a business automatically, but I don't know how, no one's going to automate it for you. Right. Right. So it's this just cool. really important. And then also too, the cool thing is the last thing I'll show you, um, is that if you mark these tasks complete in Airtable, because they were generated, if you, map, you mark them complete in, in Asana, you, and then in Airtable, because they were connected by the same, they were written the same way, it'll go back to Airtable market complete. So their project tracker looks, looks updated as well. So if you're interested in doing this, Systems Bootcamp is my, my plug. Um, if you're- um, <laughs> Get your plug in. Two giveaways. Get my plug in. Um, so there's two giveaways. I'm giving away two free bootcamps. And then 25% um, of anybody else who wants to sign up, you can code Airtable. Um, Chris has a link. So if you have any questions, I'm here. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see the cool things that you can do in Airtable once you have your stuff organized. Very cool. Thank you so much, Jen. Now, Jen, we, do we have any more speakers We on track three? Um, cherry. Cherry. Oh, cher okay. Miss Cherry. We're going to end with a cherry on top. And then, Chris, cherry. you are our whipped cream. Oh, okay, a whipped cream. Uh, <laughs> Cherry, dude, are you on the line? Caller, Cherry from, we'll make Cherry Cincinnati. C Cincinnati Cherry, are you on? I see her logged in and we're waiting for her. We can see Cherry. We just Probably can't hear you. Cherry, can we hear you? Okay, a little can you technical. Hear me? Yes, Sherry, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. I was wondering what happened there, but yes, wrapping up with a cherry on top. <laughs> Thank you, awesome. Sherry. You are spotlighted and ready to close us out for the day. Well, perfect. then I'll, Thanks I'll speak. So much. But, uh... Yes, I'll share my screen. Give me a second. Here we go. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Looks yes, great. Yes, we can. Yep. Perfect, it. perfect. So everybody, just by way of quick instructions, I'm Cherry. I'm the founder of AirOps Consulting. We've been helping our clients with lots of different things and lots of different things related to Airtable, lots of different processes, programs, and just tracking in general of all sorts of different things. Um, I'm generally very passionate about helping my clients grow. Um, having worked in sales and operations, being able to help teams improve how they work and helping them become more efficient feels like a very natural place to start when I'm helping my clients grow. So our goal for today is basically to just talk through some different strategies, different systems, and uh, kind of how Airtable can really help a sales funnel become more effective. And our goal for our salespeople, so just to put everything in context, let's talk about you know, B2B sales, whether you're a SaaS company, whether you're selling a product to other stores, your goal for your salespeople is to be able to have back-to-back -back calls booked with qualified leads every single day. And a lot of salespeople, what happens is they spend half their time looking at leads, half their time doing some of thin stuff, and then, um, well, we're talking about three halves now, but uh, the last third of their time spent on calls. And what we really want to do is to be able to build, you know, going off of Jen's example of operating like a machine, if you're walking through Toyota's factory, 
their assemb in their assembly line, somebody is making the car's body and frame, and somebody else is assembling the doors, and somebody off to the right is in a room painting the cars. So sales is no different in the way that somebody could be doing the lead sourcing for you, maybe a vendor in India or a vendor in Ukraine that's doing the data enrichment, and then one person or a different team could be doing your qualifications calls, doing your emails, doing all your scheduling. And then finally, your salesperson comes in and sells the products and negotiates with the customer. So at the end of the day, you have lots of different people within your sales team doing different roles. And that's very much like a factory assembly line. And to be able to compartmentalize your sales tasks is going to just completely change your world because your salespeople are getting paid maybe 100K to 300K if you're selling medical devices and they should not be looking up their own leads because 15, hour, 15 minutes of their time is worth so much more and it's probably worth more to you than hiring an intern to be able to get to know your business and find the kind of leads and businesses that you can sell to. So, we can get into how Airtable can help you with this. But the idea is that, you know, your salespeople cost a lot of money, you pay them a ton, your university interns that you're going to hire to be your admin staff is going to get paid a fraction of that. And your vendor team in Ukraine or India gets paid an even smaller fraction. So it's really important to compartmentalize those sales processes. And in terms of implementing the right systems, we can take a look at how we can compartmentalize the different sales tasks into different ta tables within your database. So with the lead sourcing piece, um, we're going to pretend that we're all partners within a company that produces the world's best coffee. And we want our coffee to get into every single, um, you know, wonderful, delightful, like cafe ever in all across the world. And instead of our sales team looking for cafes one by one, Googling and looking on Yelp, we can basically have an admin team do all of that. So they can find different lists of cafes um, on blogs, on different uh, websites, maybe on Yelp as well. And we're going to look for cafes and gift shops and maybe restaurants that this world's best coffee can belong to. So after that list is generated, um, your vendor team, then we move on into our lead slash like contacts table. And how this works is you can divide this up into different sections for each team. So when we're doing our initial data enrichment phase, it might be that our vendor team is just looking at only the field that they need. So for example, they're enriching phone numbers, they're finding emails, they're fi figuring out the number of locations. And this is just a very simplified version of what I would actually collect for a client. So when we're doing data enrichment for real, uh, we might collect 20 or 30 different fields. And that's really important. Um, you might also have a view just to review your vendor's work and provide any feedback. Um, and then after the data enrichment is done and you're happy with it, the next step is to hand it off to your sales reps. Or it could be your sales reps or another different team that handles sales support from a booking perspective or emailing before the call is actually booked. So in this stage, we're looking at all sorts of things. And the purpose is that your sales team, when somebody comes in that day, they can look at all sorts of different leads that they need to follow up on or all sorts of leads that they're responsible for. And they, of course, they can log interactions with those people. They can see the stage, uh, just key pieces of information that your sales rep needs to see. And I always like these gallery views because they're super visual and you can connect a person or a business to a photo. 
So really, we're, spe we're really spoon feeding our sales team the information. And then the next thing that a lot of sales teams struggle with is keeping track of their tasks. So follow-ups, um, you know, whether you need to call and follow up, email to follow up, text and text message to follow up, they're really hard to manage because, you know, before all of this Airtable automation um, or before automated systems in general, what you had to do is either book yourself a calendar reminder in Google Calendar or write it down in your notebook. And you're going to lose pages in your notebook or just lose your notebook altogether. And now all of a sudden, all these follow-ups are just gone. Or if you're busy that day and you miss a follow-up, that's just gone into the abyss. You're, the likelihood of remembering it is so low. So what we can do instead is at different phases of pursuing a lead, you can create different tasks. So initially you might have outreach calls, you might have text messages, um, those can send automatically through Twilio, you can send uh, calendar invites through Google Calendar, you can send, uh, you can send, uh, no, sorry, not send, but you can also call the person. So we'll just use this call as an example. And this is laid out in a situation where when Luke comes in every morning or when you as the sales rep comes in every morning, all of their tasks are organized based on urgency. So red is super urgent. This was actually due yesterday. Why didn't you get to it? You got to get on top of this person right away. And yellow would be something that's coming up within the next few days and green would be anything that's after that. So just helping your salespeople stay organized is so important in a system like this. And what you can do then is set up a, so let's say I've, I'm Luke and I'm calling Anthracite Coffee today and I'm calling Allie. And Allie tells me, you know what, I'm really busy today. Call me back in October. So I say, okay, I'll call you back in October. And then what I can do is before I mark this task as complete, I'm just going to add a follow-up task. And once I click add this follow-up task, a new task gets created at the bottom to say, hey, you've actually, you need to call Allie on October 1st, which is our next due date. And every single time you clear a task from your to-do list, you should be adding a new task or um, replacing it with another follow-up email or follow-up call. And this is going to really help your team stay on track and not lose those opportunities and those leads. And in terms of working together, so now we've just covered three steps from your vendors who are enriching the leads for you, your admin staff who are, um, or your admin or sales staff who are keeping track of these leads and doing tasks to make sure we get them. And then finally, we also want to get a sense of what reporting looks like. And within apps, you can download or you can install all sorts of reporting metrics. And one of the good um, things to do is just to start with something really simple. You can start with uh, bar charts and pie charts to figure out where your leads are, how many people are assigned to each person. So these are just very core funnel metrics that every single sales team or um, company owner should know. You should always know where your uh, sales are at and how many people are in the funnel. That's really important. And then the other thing that's really great with Airtable and a lot of businesses have trouble with is really lead attribution. So for a given month, if 100 leads came in this month, how many of them have converted? How many of them do we have initial calls booked with? How many of them do we have signed contracts and deals with? And then finally, because we've got our deals and opportunities with all of our different leads, you can see that it's very easy for us to get a profitability number. So within each of these uh, clients, we've sold them $10,000 to $50,000 worth of coffee, and this is our COGS, our ad dollar spending, our shipping costs to get these products to our customers. And then finally, we end up with a profitability 
number. And at this point, all this reporting is really for your senior executives, the owners of the company, and the sales managers. So all of a sudden, now you've got a fourth stakeholder in this database. And that is really the beauty of it because you can have so many different people working all in one place from start to finish, from the lead sourcing all the way through to reporting. So this is a very simplified uh, version of um, what we would build, but it's a great illustration of where you can get to with a sales team. This is great. So Sherry, where can people find out more if they want to work with their apps? I know you guys are also giving away <laughs> some gifts. I think you're giving away five one-hour consulting sessions. Yes, that's right. Um, so go ahead and fill in a form if you would like to get in touch and happy to um, work with you for the hour on consulting and really just love learning about different businesses. And we've worked with lots of different industries, from nonprofits to real estate to um, manufacturing and retail um, on four different continents. So you can definitely reach out to us on our website, which is airopsconsulting.org. You can connect with me personally on LinkedIn and on YouTube as well. I just started my own YouTube channel, um, kind of walking through Watch out, how Gareth. to build different databases <laughs> step by step, inspired by Gareth and this. It was really lovely watching his talk this morning. Um, so if you would like to build a more simplified version of this database I just showed, it's pretty similar. Um, you can go ahead to my YouTube channel and watch how to build that step-by-step. -step. And I really go through all the logic of why we're setting things up a certain way. So it's really beginner friendly. Well, thank you so much, Sherry. Jen. My pleasure. Do, you, do we have more? Is, is there more to this track? Because I, I, I can't take any more track three. It's, I'm overwhelmed. No, that's it. We're good. <laughs> no, really? Is that a good? Yeah, it ended up with a positive note. Really cool stuff. Very cool to see. Very cool. Like we said, a, a cherry on top. Um, well, I guess, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Sherry, if you could stop sharing your video. Yes, of course.